G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy on what is a beautiful Saturday morning here in Perth. It's the first time we've seen a perfect day of sunlight for what feels like months. And here I am sitting down all by myself to make you guys a tear maker. That is painting a very depressing picture of my social life right now, but you know what? I just love content, bro. So I figured we'd sit down and take a look at ranking the AFL coaches as they currently are in terms of how they were during their playing careers. And it's interesting to sort of see the trends between who was actually a gun player and also a gun coach. And you know, what's the relationship is between actually being a good player and becoming a good coach. There seems to be a few coaches out there that have done very well despite not really dominating at the highest level. As you can imagine, not really old enough to have seen all of these players play. They're spanning, you know, a number of different generations here, some older than others. As such, I'm gonna need my trusty notes tab in here. so. I I've you know, collated a few notes and that will just help me do a better job of this tier maker. Before we get into it, don't forget to check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on their elite male grooming products, you can head to manscaped.com and use the code TRUEFORTY20, all caps, all one word. You get amazing products like this cologne, which I keep very nice and close, and some moistened ball wipes. You've also got the boxes, the actual lawnmower 4.0 itself, and you know, things like the ball deodorant as well, which you know, you don't think you need it, but you probably do. It's also Father's Day coming up. I'm not saying you buy your dad a ball deodorant, but you know, it's an option. It's an option. All right, let's crack into the tea maker. All right, first up, we're going to go with Adelaide's Ben Rutten. He's obviously the coach of Essendon right now, but he played 229 games for the Crows. Uh, never won a flag there, if I'm not mistaken. I think he came close in 05 when they won the minor premiership. I believe he was All-Australian that year as well. Uh, one of the, Not one of the few, but one of uh, a handful of players that I genuinely remember quite well. He was a good sort of uh, defender in a very strong team. I'm going to say he's earned gun status. Okay, I think I'm going to reserve elite for, you know, the truly elites, which we'll get to in a moment. But uh, he was definitely a gun, Ben Rutten. Next up, we got Chris Fagan, played about 260 games in the handful, as it's called, in Tasmania. Never played at the truly elite level or what is considered the elite level in the VFL, AFL arena, if I'm not mistaken. Just played in Tassie as such, sort of, despite having a very good career, can't rate him too high. Um, it's I don't know why he didn't play you know VFL AFL I'm sure he had a good enough career to sort of warrant it but for whatever reason didn't so I'm gonna put him in decent because I think he's I think he's better than average based on the career like I said 400 odd goals in 260 games uh, yeah he must have been a handy pretty pretty handy player next up we have Geelong's coach Chris Scott uh, who would have been I think he's played in two premierships out of that Brisbane I think he missed the three peat in 03 uh, but was a really tough hard-nosed defender, uh, along with his brother, Brad, in that back line. Um, being a dual premiership player, played over 200 games. I think, again, like Ben Rutten, you could class him as an absolute gun. Next, you've got young Alistair Clarkson. I've included this him in this, and I've also got Sammy Mitchell, which we'll get to later. But uh, Alistair Clarkson was, despite being you know the greatest coach in the modern era, uh, didn't quite have that same career in terms of his playing career. I think he played like 50 to 80 games for, for North and Melbourne. Um, didn't miss out on that North Premiership side in 96. He got traded to Melbourne. Uh, as such, I think he's probably the first average player. That's harsh, you know, to crack, you know, 50 to 80 games. Can't remember what it was. Uh, you, you must be half decent. But in terms of scaling this, I think I think he's average. Is that harsh to put him below Fagan, who never actually played in that league? Maybe. You tell me. Next up, we got another Tassie boy, David Noble, who I believe... Uh, just played a handful of state games for Tasmania. Oh no, I think he played a couple of games for Fitzroy. That's right. But again, can't really use that too much as a uh, as too much of an endorsement. I think I think he's going to go average. Uh, seems to be doing a good job at North Melbourne as head coach. To sort of moving to that point that I said earlier about good coaches don't necessarily have to have to have played at the highest level or dominated. Um, but it's early days, but uh, yeah, I think I think average player is fair. Next up, we've got David Teague, again, another player who played for two clubs, uh, under 100 games. He played for Carlton and North Melbourne. Played, I think, about 80 games, if I'm not mistaken, but also won a best and fairest. So I think that elevates him to decent. Didn't quite crack the 100 games yet, uh, but winning the Carlton best and fairest, I'll be in this side that probably would have gone close to the wooden spoon. I think Richmond probably uh, were because Deledio was picked one that year. But yeah, Teague was a decent player. Um, I think that's fair. Next up, you can't really tell from the picture, but I believe that is Damien Hardwick who played, you know, 200 odd games for two clubs. I think it was 150 for Essendon, another 50 for Port Adelaide, played in two premiership sides. By and large, I think that qualifies him for gun status. Again, not quite elite. We'll get to the elites. But that is a very good career. And, you know, he's been involved in five premierships, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, didn't he also spend some time with Clarkson at Hawthorne? I wonder if he was involved in more as an assistant coach. I couldn't tell you, but you know, at least as a head coach or you know player, that's five flags between them. So great career. Justin Longmuir played what I believe was about 139 games for Fremantle, 166 goals. Look at me, it didn't even look at my notes. I just have a really, really good memory. Longmuir was a very good player, and if I'm not mistaken, had his career cut short at about 27 years old. I want to say he retired pretty, pretty young. Uh, but he was a generally good player. Uh, I put him in decent. Didn't really have the accolades to elevate him into gun. But I think he was just a very talented player that probably, you know, was kind of robbed of a 200-game career from uh, from injuries, if I'm not mistaken. Next up, this is me sort of starting to need my notes now. Ken Hinckley played 183 games for Fitzroy and Geelong. Uh, I don't think he had any meaningful accolades beyond that. And I, I want to sort of separate him from the genuine gun players here because he hasn't won a flag Um so I think 183 games, you must be a decent player. Um, and probably, you know, it's probably unfair to put him with Teague and Fagan because, you know, played an extra 100 games than Teague and Fagan never played at this level. But I'd say he's at the upper end of decent, but not quite at a gun. I think for a gun, you have to have won, you know, I think all of those guys uh, or two of those three won premierships. And Rutten had it in All-Australian as well. So that's the way I'm kind of separating it, but we could come back to it. Next up, we have got GWS's coach Leon Cameron, who of course played 256 games for the Bulldogs. I remember that. Don't remember him playing at Richmond, but I do remember him at the Bulldogs for whatever reason. 256 games is a very handy career. You know, that puts you in sort of an elite category in terms of the games you've played. Um, Didn't play any flags. He did win a best and fairest for the Bulldogs, if I'm not mistaken. He probably is deserving of gun, but by that same token... Kind of on a Hinkley level, just played, you know, three or four extra seasons. I think the best and fairest probably elevates him to gun. I think I think if you're a 250-game player, you deserve it. Again, bear in mind, I'm trying to rate these players without really assessing them as players, some of them. So um, it'd be interesting to see in the comments if anyone remembers Cameron and thinks that, you know, I'm underrating him or probably more likely overrating him there. Next up, we've got the Swans coach, John Longmire. Of course, played in that North Melbourne team, played 200 games, won a Coleman medal as well. So that that's one of the better individual accolades I think we've, we've got on this list so far, uh, proving that you are the single best goal kicker in the, of the season that year. And uh, being a key forward, that's the highest honor you can get. You can't really win the brand like can you? So on top of that, won a best and fairest uh, for the Ruse. And I want to say played in at least one flag because he was playing in that... Oh, in fact, the picture is literally him. At, uh, at the podium so obviously you want a flag I can't remember if it was two that's all um, I want to say probably the 1999 flag but anyway I digress I think that career is worthy of gun status if you win the common medal you're elite in your position I guess you could actually make a case you put him higher uh, but we'll table that for now because there's probably only a couple there guys that I want to reserve for elite but we can shuffle it back next up we've got Luke Beveridge who played three clubs if I'm not mistaken uh, he played for you know Footscray the team he coaches now but he also played for Melbourne and St Kilda if I'm not mistaken for just 118 games and no obvious personal accolades as far as I'm aware it, this, is it harsh to judge a player for playing for three clubs because it's like oh you got traded a couple of times you can't be that good it's probably a bit harsh right I think back then you know what I'm not going to include it in that analysis but I'm, I, is it harsh to say average just because he squeezed out 34 out five more games than Teague um, Teague won a best and fairest and now I'm starting to think I overrated Fagan because Beveridge at least played 118 games in the AFL hmm come back to that come back to that we got Matthew Nix at the Sydney Swans played about 175 games I actually do remember him uh, but sort of right at the tail end of his career played for 10 years I think he's probably on the Hinkley sort of level. No no accolades as such, but 175 games, you must have been decent. I think you've, you've surpassed average when you pass about 150 games just of and by itself. So pretty good effort. Next up, we have Carlton's Brett Ratton, and he played 255 games. I do remember, uh, I don't know if it was the last game, but there was some sort of Ratton milestone game while I was still watching football. So I sort of caught the end of, uh, of Brett Ratton there, but he played 255 games. Won a premiership in the 1995 side. Uh, he was captain for a couple of years. Three best and fairest and two All-Australians. I think we've got our first elite player. And I, I don't really remember him so much as a player. I do remember he was very respected. But I think if you're pulling multiple best and fairest, you're a premiership player uh, and multiple All-Australians too. And the captain. I think we've got our first elite player. 
So let me know in the comments if you think I'm being too generous. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get into some of the more elite players. In fact, I reckon we've got a few coming up as well. You've got Robert Harvey, okay? Temporary coach right now at Collingwood. But I didn't realize how decorated this guy was. I, I'd forgotten he played 383 games. I do remember him just playing forever. But 383 games is massive. Two Brownlow medals. Two Brownlow medals. Not just one. Two. Try that on for size. So on top of that, he's won eight All-Australian jumpers as well. So ridiculous career for the great man, Robert Harvey. And it'd be, be cool if he adds to that legacy by having a successful coaching career as well. Um, hopefully not too successful if it's Collingwood. But either way, I think the best player we've listed so far. Next, you've got Sam Mitchell, player on a very similar level. 329 games, four flags. Four flags for Hawthorne. One of them as premiership captain and, of course, won the 2012 Brownlow medal after the fact, um, after Joe Watson was disqualified for it. But is there any debate that Sam Mitchell is an elite player? Um, no, I don't think there's any debate. Technically, he's also not the coach yet. I've just sort of included him for a bit of fun, um, but he will be senior coach officially next year, so why not? Next up, you've got Adam Simpson, and uh, this is a tough one. 306 games for North Melbourne. Now, there's a lot of North... There's a lot of North in here, or at least it feels like it. that North 90s team sort of bred a few players with uh, Simpson and Longmire. Actually, there's only those two, and then I guess you can include Clarkson. Maybe it just felt like there was more North. Anyway, Simpson, 306 games, was captain of that club. He won two premierships in 96 and 99, and he was All-Australian for one of those years as well. I think 300 games, premiership, All-Australian. I think those are all the ingredients for being elite. Now, we categorize Harvey and Mitchell above Ratten and Simpson, definitely, but I think they're all elite. I think that's fair. Next up is Simon Goodwin for the Melbourne Footy Club. I do remember this guy pretty well at Adelaide. Again, like uh, Ben Rutten, that would have been teammates for a while. Uh, one of the better players in that Adelaide side that just couldn't quite crack a grand final in the mid-early 2000s. I don't remember this bloke playing in 275 games. He was around for a while and, of course, was part of the two Adelaide flags in 97 and 98. Um, and on top of that, five All-Australians. So I think when you're near 300 games, you've won five All-Australians. On top of the two flags, he's elite. He's elite. Next up, we have got Stewie Jew, lucky last, Gold Coast Suns coach who played for two clubs. In fact, he won two flags at two different clubs. He won the... Port Adelaide Premiership in 2004 when they beat Brisbane and, uh, of course, was one of the heroes in that 2008 great grand final where Hawthorne upset Geelong as well. One of the better five-minute passages. Any players played in the grand final as well, so go check that out on YouTube somewhere. Uh, but 206 games for two flags. That's probably gun, isn't it? I don't remember him being super good. I, I, I mean, you can't really deny it, can you? But it's just more like my memory, my perception was just that he was sort of like a novel player because he's a hugely wide set bloke with an amazing left foot boot. Uh, I used to fear playing Port Adelaide in particular early. I think he used to get belted by them. Anyway, I'm talking shit here. I think he's earned gun status. If you play in multiple premierships, two different clubs, you're at least as good as Damien Hardwick. I think that's I think that's fair. I think that's fair. All right, so just looking at this list, we've got the five elites, <laughs> the elites, Ratton, Harvey, Sam Mitchell, Adam Simpson, and Simon Goodwin, all to varying levels of elite there, but still elite. The guns are Ben Rutten, Chris Scott, Damien Hardwick, Leon Cameron, John Longmire, and Stuart Jew. This is where I'm going to make my first change. I'm going to probably drop Fagan down here. I'm sure he was a very good footballer, but I can't really group him above, you know, a Luke Beveridge who played 118 games, so I'm going to change that. The Decents will be Teague, 83 games, but one of best and fairest. Longmuir, uh, Ken Hinckley, and Matthew Nix, who sort of stuck out longer careers. And then the average players, it seems harsh, but certainly in comparison to some of their coaching careers, uh, you've got Alistair Clarkson, David Noble, Luke Beveridge, and Chris Fagan, who never played at the highest level. That's it, guys. That is my tier list of AFL coaches currently in the league as to how they were as footballers in their playing careers. Let me know in the comments what you think I got right or wrong. Again, pretty open to the fact that I didn't see a lot of these players play. So kind of going with educated guesses on half of these. So if you're a bit older and you can sort of shed some light, let us know where you would have gone differently. I'm kind of happy with that based on the logic. I think I, think I did okay. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying the content lately. Do subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.